Hey, this week I'm bros, Bibles, and beer. Those concepts imply that parents are doing nothing at home. Make the bedroom great again. Eventually you go into the public world. Nope. Y- Amish. <laughs> Next question. But this is all a part of being an adult in the world is you prepare your kid to come across different ideas. I'm going to stop talking for a while. Let me help you out. (laughs) It's the most brilliant thing I've ever seen. (laughs) Hey, everybody. Welcome to Bros, Bibles, and Beer, episode 246. My name is Zach. I feel like tonight, maybe all of us lost, but I'm here with my friend Andy. Andy, how's it going? Climate change. I wish it would change because it's been way too freaking hot. We have no Jeff, but we have Nate. Nate? I should be drinking water. (laughs) (laughs) That's my fault. I should be drinking water. He should be drinking water. Yeah. We didn't quite hit the post. That's I think that's my first time doing the intro. Not bad. You know, it's a work in progress. Yes, I like it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Bros, Bibles, and Beer. We are a podcast where we have serious conversations about faith and culture without taking ourselves too seriously. I am Andy McCraw, joined by my good friend and co-host, uh, Zach Crater. As mentioned before, we're missing Jeff Pearson today, our third bro. What's up with that? Um, unfortunately, he decided to spend time with his wife. So, good luck, Tanya. <laughs> what were they doing, though? Inquiring Ooh. minds want to know. Yeah, they said they were watching the debates. Speaking of the debates, we just got finished watching the debates we, with a side of pizza. We just watched the debates, had pizza... And a drink or two, and it's you can see we have uh, other drinks. So I'll just let that be the future caveat for whatever happens next. Yeah, you know? th- this isn't our fault. <laughs> uh, I I mentioned during the the debates though that um, man, I caught myself feeling like anxious, anxious as uh, honestly as both of them would answer. I'm like, oh, what are you gonna say? Oh, what are you gonna say? And uh, and it felt weird. I'm like, well, why do I care about that? I'd react to something. I'm like, I feel like I'm reacting stronger than I should react to that. It's funny you say that because um, I uh, I have a little bit of that too. And I think it's PTSD from my past when I cared way too much about yeah. who was my overlord yeah. or overlady as what might happen. We'll see. Um, it just, where I just needed my guy to win and, uh, just caring way too much. And so now I don't care, but maybe a little part of me still has a little bit of that because my emotions are betraying what I want to believe. Um, even though I, I, uh, just, I just confess, I can't see myself voting for either one of the major party tickets. And like I said at the beginning, I feel like America lost tonight, but it was, it was fun. I feel like we're not going to do a full breakdown here. We're going to get to yeah. some important stuff about, you know, you know, our minds, our kids' minds being corrupted or, you know, not in public school. <laughs> um, but watching that, it's, you know, just my quick recap is Kamala didn't totally poop the bed right? figuratively or metaphorically. And so she probably won. And Trump did Trump things and, you know, there it is. So... If you want to know what uh, Jeff and Tanya are doing, it just depends on how Jeff feels Trump did. If he's excited (laughs) by his performance, then I feel like... maybe she'll be excited by Jeff's performance. Yes. They can parlay that into something great. You know, make the bedroom great again. I'm I'm confident their bedroom has always been great. Yeah. Did, did I'm going to stop talking for a while. Let me help you out. (laughs) Did at any point in time... You did the thought go through your mind as a Christian? How should I be re- reacting to what's on screen right now? No, not specifically. Yeah, there were two things, two topics that got breached, which were um, uh, basically like foreign policy slash war, and then abortion were the two that I was that I did catch myself going like, okay, well, um how how do i how do i align my values and my beliefs uh, as a christian with what they're projecting right now is uh, not that it's going to be a one to one and not that they're there to represent who i am and who, and what i believe in but it's we're in the world where it's it's got to be a game of how can you get anywhere in the ballpark that's yeah. what that's what we're succumbing to now 
Are you anywhere in the ballpark? Okay, you're close enough. Who do I hate less? Yes. Politics is the new horseshoes and hand grenades. Yeah. And, you know, it's also, you know, it's, a, it's kind of, I think of it like pro wrestling and there's potential dire physical consequences because they can actually make laws and do executive orders. So some of that stuff matters. But going back to your original question, I never thought exactly the way you phrase it as a Christian. What do I think about this? But what has shaped my, the way I, I walk my politics and I care about politics, even though I, if you listen long enough, I, I, I'm kind of a political junkie, but I haven't voted in the last couple of presidential elections. And a lot of that is because of foreign policy. And so like, I, I sort of joked when Kamala was saying something about she was hammering Trump on something he did that, oh, he hosted Al, not Al Qaeda, uh, Taliban, the Taliban for to negotiate a ceasefire in yeah. Afghanistan. And so she was hammering him on that. And I just brought up how when during the peak terror wars, we were simultaneously fighting Al Qaeda in Iraq and assisting ISIS funding, funding ISIS in Syria. And that's the same group, people. I just did Trump hands. It's the same group, people. Oh, I don't even know what Your Trump that... is so much better than mine, though. <laughs> mine just... We're losing it as it, time goes uh... on. But a little known fact, it, doing warfare and American empire and just empire in general is messy, and you end up creating strange bedfellows. Right. And so we've, we got ourselves into a situation where we were simultaneously fighting one group in one country and funding the same group in the other country and just giving it a different name. So once I learned enough about that stuff, I was just like, I am out until there's big changes or t- so something changes. Or if I was in a state where the election would be closer right now, it's not going to be close. Trump is not going to win California then maybe I would consider it. But for now, I have the benefit of voting third party, writing my dad in, Mickey Mouse. Uh, I might write my dad in and then then tell him that on his birthday. Oh, who was the guy? Happy birthday, dad. I I voted for you for president. (laughs) Take a picture of it. (sighs) Put it in a card. Yeah. Yeah. Dad, if you you make it, we'll all be proud of you. Yes. But I should say I, I don't harbor any ill will for people voting when... People vote for all kinds of reasons. People aren't the cartoon characters that each side would have have you believe that they are. And for example, our missing comrade here, he'll he'll love that yeah. I called him comrade, <laughs> uh, is going to vote for Trump, has donated to Trump. That's not really a secret. And he's not a crazy Christian nationalist or hyper MAGA or whatever. And maybe he's a little MAGA, but whatever that means to you, I know enough it's about Scotia MAGA. Enough about Jeff to see the human behind that and so yeah uh i would encourage more people to do the same i think that's a good posture to have and i'm a hero thank you (laughs) um i voted for trump the first time i voted for the libertarian candidate the second time and breaking news i think i i think i will um drown my third vote in three elections on on trump this time oh yeah i will um, it would have been really fun to have RFK Jr. as a as an option. He's actually one of the reasons I would burn my vote towards Trump because I think that there's a good chance he may actually be in his cabinet. Um, and there were a lot of things that I I, I don't again I, I align completely with zero uh, political figures. There's there's it's a fool's errand if that's what you're looking for to find someone who like believes all of your beliefs. It's just not going to happen. We are choosing the lesser of the evils, anyway. But I like I like I like enough of what uh, his positions are to to say it would be great if he could if he could have a role that would do something positive in the country. Yeah. Well, at this point, it's clear that we will fail anybody's political purity tests. As if you've listened or watched at all, you know that we fail most theological purity tests because we're not all the same and don't have everything buttoned up and anybody that tells you they do is lying. So Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I'm curious about how many other Christians might feel like they're in a position of 
genuine glowing endorsement of one candidate or the other, like like deep seated, honest belief. In in their darkest hour, would they look themselves in the mirror? I'm mixing metaphors here, and say, "Yes, I genuinely am excited about voting for this person." Uh, Jeff might be close. Yeah, I think he genuinely likes the man. Yeah. Um, but most people know. But like, I've got plenty of family and stuff family friends that either won't vote or you know they're really afraid of they look at yeah the left side of the equation as literally wanting to destroy every baby that exists ever and so they can't vote that direction um being hyperbolic people but uh they can't vote that direction and they also see the flaws in trump and of which there are many this is not a shock but yeah, hold their nose. They will, and uh, I think the same is true the other side. Although the, it is weird how things flipped so quickly with Kamala, where she was kind of nowhere to be seen, sort of an absentee vice president, and all of a sudden it's like, oh my gosh, we have joy. The other side is weird, and everybody just jumps on. So it's it's pretty magical the way the political propaganda works. Do you think it's like a long distance relationship where the human brain will fill in whatever they want in the absence of the presence of that person? Probably. Meaning like if you're dating someone long distance and obviously you don't get to spend time together with them. So there's these huge gaps in who you know them to be and what your experience and relationship is together. How do you know I don't have a full-size throw pillow made out of my <laughs> wife's body type? That lives in another city? <laughs> no, I'm, when she's gone, oh. I bring the, the full-size body pillow out. The point is is that be, is that you don't have those... And I just cuddle, <laughs> to be clear. It's just cuddling. But no one should touch that puddle. Uh, that that, <laughs> that puddle? puddle. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, pillow. Oh. Uh, uh. <laughs> Actually... Uh, no one should touch either. Either the cuddle or the pillow or, or the, the puddle. puddle. <laughs> yeah. That's what you <laughs> call your cuddle pillow. It's a puddle. Uh, the point that I was trying to make is we only have so much information to go on about, about who that individual is and, um, and who we want them to be. And so in the absence, oh, that's in good. The absence of information, we as humans will fill in those gaps with the things that we want, with either good or ill, well, yeah, we'll, if it's someone oh, that if, she hasn't been there, she's not doing anything. She doesn't know anything about anything, and then vice versa, vice versa, is where it, it's it's like you I, just yeah, you, she her, hasn't been there. I don't know. You well, I bet, her. well, I bet she's probably this hard at and work. I bet she's probably at this, and she's been doing all the good. She things. She doesn't have time to show her face because she's running the country because Biden is you know the thing. Yeah, that so. There's there is some of that that's probably um, part of a str- there is, there's some strategy there which is a bummer because you would hope it would be the opposite that we would be able to be in a space where we could learn as much as we could as possible about the person and their positions and their policies but in reality we get game shows and uh, maybe they're maybe the uh, candidates are game show hosts they might be hey Nate how you doing. Nader, producer date. Doing swell. Yeah? Any thoughts? Anything pop into... You, you are free to filter in as long as yeah. it's not too much. Because we're missing Jeff. <laughs> you don't have to replace Jeff, but you can sprinkle in. Ah. Did you see any of the debates tonight? Very tail end. It was a live stream, and I walked in, um, and I was, I was more interested in the pizza and wings <laughs> than... <laughs> the uh, the recap um yeah i think at this point um in the year um i'm decided who i'm voting for and pretty much everyone i know has their candidate in mind who they're going to pull the trigger on so these debates are just um pure pure formality and entertainment you know because you know the next week is going to be um 
you know, everyone, every news station dissecting, every podcaster, pol- uh, Politico, just, you know, trying to decipher to every little thing. And more entertainment, more brain candy um, for yeah. the for the political junkies. Yeah, and it's not like, let's be honest, nobody in these debates ever, well, with few exceptions, in the recent past, is articulating well thought out political uh, policies. I know, we're all thinking of the, the Tulsi takedown. The Tulsi takedown mm. is all time. It's because she's just so crisp and clear. And there's no fluff, and she sounds like she knows what she's talking about, and she's only giving facts, and that was, it's a bummer, man. She might have been the one, she might have been like the first Democrat I would have ever voted for had they not like sabotaged her campaign. Yeah. Yeah, but that's, primarily, that's not what's happening now. Everyone's just looking for the dunk points. Tonight, I think it just... If you've already liked Trump, you probably thought he did okay. And if you like Kamala, you probably thought she did really well because she she memorized her stuff. It was good. Dude, I did like... <laughs> at one point, Trump said that <laughs> in reference to Biden uh, dropping out of the race, that they quote-unquote kicked him out like a dog. Yeah. Aww. <laughs> Aww. Don't whine about that. It was funny. <laughs> Uh, they kicked him out like a dog. But nobody likes a dog to get kicked out. Oh my gosh, I kicked my dog the other day. Whoa. Just kidding. I nudged her strongly. My dog is psychotic. Okay, you have to understand this. My dog is absolutely nuts. She's a hunting dog. And what she type will of get dog? fixated. She's a bishla. She gets fixated on this damn squirrel that's in our backyard that just, uh, <laughs> it just taunts her. That just- squirrel just shakes its ass. Dude. For your dog. And he's like, hey, you can't get this. Want to hear a funny story? Sure. One time, there was a squirrel in the backyard. And uh, they're pests, by the way. They're invasive pests in our area. They're not part of natural habitats. <laughs> anyway, Lindsay, listener, my wife, uh, was back there. And she just decided to like spray the, the squirrel with a hose. And she sprayed it. And it fell off the tree uh oh and ranger was there in a heartbeat and oh my god got it and got her revenge <laughs> oh my god i mean it was over in a split second oh it was just god. lindsay came back and she's like i don't know what just happened i'm complicit with squirrel murder she's like i don't know what just happened i don't i i can't believe this just happened she felt terrible about it she felt so bad about it and i was and i was like well okay but they are pests. Like they, they're they are bad for nature. They got them. They. <laughs> and if it was a rat, nobody would have no thought twice about that. It's because it's cuter than a rat, and it's got that bushy, bushy tail. Yeah, part of the cuteness factor. Maybe night. Maybe mo- Maybe most of the cuteness. Who doesn't love a good bushy tail? Yeah, and uh, if you don't love a good bushy tail, send email to Lindsay at brosbiblesb.com. <laughs> anyway, there's a second squirrel that's uh, been showing up, so okay, I'm gonna send Lindsay back there with a the hose. <clears throat> anyway, all right, this has been your uh, 30 seconds of squirrel talk. All right, Nate, get ready to fire up the. Um, hold on, don't do it yet. I have a clip of. I've long suffered from something that I re- recently received clarity on that Trump illuminated for me that that I can feel good about what I do. Okay. I, I can tend to take a long time to get to the point. I can ramble a little bit. Oh, I thought um, you were talking about something else. I can... Uh, <laughs> oh, I'm 45. So. <laughs> uh, we should be sponsored by Hims. Come on. Um, I've... This clip recently from a rally in Pennsylvania where Trump was explaining... You know, some of the talking points against Trump are that he's just rambling, incoherent. He's old is the thing that's coming up now. And maybe some of that is true, but uh, he he adds clarity to what's actually going on with him. All right. Will you uh, will you pull that up, Nate? All right. I do the weave. You know what the weave is? I'll talk about like nine different things and they all come back brilliantly together. Those and hands. it's like, and friends of mine that are like English professors, they say, 
It's the most brilliant thing I've ever seen. <laughs> and, but the fake news, you know what they say? He rambled. That's not rambling. When you have, what you do is you get off a subject to mention another little tidbit, then you get back onto the subject, and you go through this, and you do it for two hours, and you don't even mispronounce one word. That is Donald Trump. All right, you can kill it. <laughs> Apparently, I'm weaving. Oh, you're I'm, weaving. I'm doing the weave. Oh, well. If it takes me a while to get somewhere, just just have patience. I'll oh. bring it back around. Old Zach Weaver Crater. That's what the we'll be weave. I just... Come on, that's funny, people. I mean, we need to get you a jersey that says the weave on the, the back. <laughs> and just have it be like Trump's hair as the logo. Yeah. Somehow just make it just the hair. Oh, man. It just made me laugh. That's nothing other than the fact that that is funny. And if you don't think it's funny, it's because you don't have a sense of humor. I don't care what you think about the man. That's funny. And if you were to become president and we get more of that, you know, that's a value add, right? Well, news networks would be excited for a Trump presidency because they will have content. They got that cheddar. Yeah, they get lots of content. Yeah, you could you could cut to uh, the president or the CEO of CNN before Trump first got elected was talking. He leaked tape of a phone call or something where he's talking about how good it was for business that Trump was. Oh yeah, in the race. Yeah, yeah. You love him or you love to hate him. He is polarizing. Which actually that. That's kind of a hot take that I think there's science to back it up is that people that hate him the most need him the most. And literally the media, it, the p- pocketbooks, they all want him uh, in spite of what they might say, some of them. And people that are railing against him and, and feel like democracy is in danger, I think there's a part of them that are addicted to the fear and outrage that they experience at him. Science has proven that the algorithms that are... Um, constantly putting negatives or or uh, content in front of you that that draws a negative emotion is the thing that will drive higher engagement. Mm-hmm. Which is, I wonder, similar to how Google has uh, Google search has remapped the way that people learn. I don't know if you know this. So there's been studies about this too. That if you think about it, before Google search um, a- occurred or became a thing, you would have to actually think through the question that was in your mind. And you'd have to ponder it, and you might have to go do some research on this thing. Now, we've trained and rerouted the the pathways in our brains to just go, tell me the answer. So I don't reason through it. I've, I've caught myself like slipping in this area, and one of the things that I do to try to combat that is I will, it usually happens with people. I will forget someone's name, like an actor or an actress or someone I used to know. I'll forget their name. Dude, talk about being mid 40s. And instead of going and looking them up, I'll just go, okay, brain, it's in there somewhere. Just go go find it. And, it, and I'm not a very disciplined person, but when I can be disciplined about this, it's taken like a day before. And finally it comes to me, I'm like, oh, Denzel Washington. Nice. You defragged your hard drive. Yeah. Remember when that was a thing? Oh, yeah. We That's used to do that too. Age. That's a dated reference. Def- Listen, young people, if you didn't know what defrag... No, I'm kidding. I got so much satisfaction of clicking defragment. And they used to have a graphic of like the squares lining up and stuff. Yeah, yeah. It would restack your hard drive. Yep. The, the, the marbles so, of your hard drive. So let's see if we can take advantage of this algorithm. Yeah. Get, get more views. All right. The Holocaust uh, didn't go happen. Go Trump. Okay, new cut. Go Kamala. No. <laughs> no Holocaust. It's a myth. You know why? Jews aren't real. <laughs> that... they, they never existed. And you can take that to the bank. Only their lasers. You can take that to the non-Jewish bank. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> These are jokes. These are all jokes, people. We don't believe that Jews own banks. <clears throat> <laughs> because they don't exist. <laughs> Exactly. I'm starting. The more I say it, I'm starting to oh my believe gosh. it. <laughs> I'm sorry. We aren't being. Yeah, this is. These are jokes, people. These are genuinely jokes to make fun of how ridiculous the algorithms are. In case anyone wants to try to come after us, please, all right. Please don't. Okay. Are public schools? Are you? You're a product of the public school. I'm. Um, I'm a product of both, public and private, and home. 
All three. Me too. Ah. Uh, this explains a lot. Well. What about you, Nate? Yeah. Yeah. I've, I'm a little bit of everything. Really? I, my, I was in public school my whole life until, uh, except for second grade, because I had a terrible first grade teacher and my parents um, had to uh, like fix the problems that she caused. Mrs. Mullins? Whoa. Screw you. Cedric Mullins' mom from the Baltimore Orioles? Uh, Chris Mullins' mom from the oh, Golden State Golden Warrior. State Warriors. Nice. Yeah. Nice. That high high fade for yep. a white guy. Yep. She had one too. <laughs> <laughs> she drive a Subaru? Yeah. She had a flat top. She had a Subaru, but she could shoot the shit out of the ball. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Um, Part of Run TMC. So you, you can pop up that PIP. All right. So this is from X, Christianity Today. This is a couple of days old now. Um, they posted an article, public school, which we might get to the article, but public school is like strength training for our children's faith. Let them wrestle with worldly counter narratives to God's truth while they're still under your care. And I thought we'd go through a few comments here. Also, I noticed the assumption in the quote from the article, wrestle with worldly counter narratives to God's truth. It just assumes that there's worldly counter narratives to God's truth in public schools, which I'm sure there are. There are. There are. That doesn't feel controversial. um, But the assumption is that that the public school is the enemy of God and wants to, to... that's kind of built into the quote a little bit. And l- my, let's look at um, smash balls. <laughs> sending your child to public school is like sending an untrained soldier into battle. You need to realize your kids aren't a missionary to public schools. They are the mission field. Wait, when did they get trained? For the battlefield? Yeah. I don't know. Will they never be trained for the battlefield? Eventually you got to go, right? Or even if you don't go to public school and you avoid that altogether, eventually you go into the public world. Nope. You, Amish. <laughs> Next question. You found, you found. Okay. <laughs> uh, Jenna Cross. Oh, yes. What could possibly go wrong handling, handing your children over to people who hate God and want to train them in paganism for 1260 hours every year for a minimum of 13 years? Paganism. She sounds delightful. Um, paganism is a specific thing, though, right? Like there are there are a set of pagan beliefs. Um, or is, is you think she's just using that as a generic? You're not a Christian term. Yeah, I I don't Probably. think I'm not sure she knows, and I don't know who this person is. I'm, oh, you don't know who J- Jenna Smashballs is? <laughs> now you're making two people. In the Bible, the the Bible uses don't do this, do this, the pagans do this. Yeah. And we have it built in what the pagans are, but pagans were just anybody that's not Jewish in the Bible. And so maybe there's a sense where she's kind of using it in her. She's not thinking Jewish. She's thinking Christian. And the pagans are just anything counter to God. She's trying to bring it back. Bringing that old school. Jenna smash balls. You can't bring that that back. All right. And then there's some... Who's uh, that dude? Oh, Vody Bakum. We cannot con- uh somebody posted a meme of Vody Bakum. We cannot continue to send our children to Caesar for their education and be surprised when they come home as Romans. I if you think that is in line with what the woman ahead of this person said, I would disagree with that. I would agree with Vody Vody Bakum in the sense that School in general is this, the public school system is sort of modeled after this old German, like you got kindergarten, that's a German word. And it's modeled off of a German school system that was designed to make people obedient. I thought it was Italian, not kindergarten, but I thought we were modeled after the Italian system. It could be a a hodgepodge, but... One of the axis of (laughs) evil. I, I think... Japanese. The broader point is we're making sure people are good at following orders and repeating things that are given to them. And this can yeah. work out well. I'm not I'm not on board with this 
the public school system. We are lucky to live in an area where the public schools are all pretty decent and most of the teachers seem to give a shit. When I was growing up at the school I went to, which is in this same area, there were teachers that were obviously drinking on you the can job. Kill that. Yeah, you can kill the PF. Yeah, thank you. He did that without even looking at it. Nate. That was a no look. No look PIP offload. No look Nate. That's what we're going to call him now. Yeah. You said uh, when you were growing up, you felt like teachers were uh, less interested in pouring into you as a young, hopeful youth. Yeah, and less equipped. I was not a good student, and part of that was ADHD and all that stuff. Um, I still struggle with like with putting thoughts down on paper. If I have to fill something out or add thoughts, uh, I I struggle with it, and. You can hear it sometimes when I'm talking where I'll start a sentence and then restart it to go a different direction. It's like my brain is firing in a different way. Bro, it's just the weave. That's right. Hell yeah. You got that weave. I got that weave, bitch. (laughs) Uh, But there were like the counselor didn't know what to do with me. uh, It sort of checked out. There were teachers that were getting high with students and drinking on the job. And I'm sure there were good teachers too, but I wasn't paying that much attention. I just knew which teacher had booze in their mug. Dude. That doesn't really, I'm sure that exists a little bit, but at least at the schools, the school my kids go to, mo- most of the teachers are dialed in. Yeah. Oh, your uh, your kid's high school was in the news though for their uh, woke-ass library, right? There, there was, not their library, a personal library of a teacher ma- uh, made a little news. That's yeah. what it was. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But the principal was on it. He explained it to the parents. None of it was in the curriculum. You know, I, the teacher might have been hoping a kid were to ask them about a book and then they could talk about it. But my kid, just talk to your kids. The The point is, if your kids go out there to do the best, I don't know that we're going to get to this article, but the article is is geared towards, you, you got to send your kids out and they're going to have to go out into the world. That so you're going to have to let them go. Plus, it's an opportunity to communicate them, share with them like how people have different ideas about what should be done in the world and the ways to yeah. to problem solve. Like you don't want your kids in a situation where they are brittle. And, yes, and and would simply crumble in the moment that they encounter something that's counter to whatever they'd experienced before that, and not know what to do. And and the worst case scenario that we can imagine as parents is uh, they make a terrible choice because they were unprepared. Yeah. Now, the uh, the argument against that is why throw your kids into the lion's den, right? Why would I do that? So what's interesting is I, I grew up 99% of my life going to public schools. And look what it did to me. Um, but I went to a Christian university uh well two christian universities because i transferred um halfway through because spokane's a terrible terrible city and i traded that for santa barbara and everyone objectively would say that is an upgrade Mm -hmm. that's not controversial (laughs) but um our daughter is going to baylor university now which is a baylor barely but the uh it's it's a uh, clearly, like they would profess Christian faith. It's a it's a Baptist school. It's private, um, and which means it has bad theology. So you're already having a problem. <laughs> God, everyone has bad theology, according to somebody, and someone else is heretic. Exactly. And um, we were when we were deciding. Well, when she was deciding, it was really her choice. When she was deciding between a few different um, s- schools. One of them was Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. And um, and there was a few others too, like Texas Tech and University of Hawaii. Anyway, a blend of Christian and non-Christian options. And we did have the talk, a talk with her, uh, and she mentioned it. She brought it up. She was like, hey, at some point, I don't want to feel like I'm the only fish that's swimming upstream. Like all, like, all of my beliefs will always be challenged all of the time. And, and I get the sense that at some of these other colleges that that's going to be the case. Um, now, at a college the size of Baylor, a, 
a Division One NCAA school with tw- more than twenty thousand students, you get the full spectrum. Not everyone's going to be a Baptist no, no, or a Christian, or even a Christian. Yeah, yeah. And those people play the sports, um, the devil's sports. <laughs> and 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 so will she will totally have those opportunities, but um, but Lindsay, her mom, my wife, and I actually feel good about the what what our encounter was with how the the administration and the teachers and the faculty approach christianity and and the chance to encourage the kids um here's here's a good example they are required to take two semesters of chapel throughout their four years of college um there are 60 different types of chapel that you can choose from that will that are up to you. You get to pick whichever one. And so you can imagine some of them are like an early morning Bible study to volunteering and homeless shelters and to late night worship um, uh, services. It's, it, it covers everything, which I think is great because the fear for, uh, for a lot of folks is you're going to pigeonhole my kid. You're going to protect them. You're going to force them into your version of Christianity or your theology, which is like heavy guardrails, instead of allowing them during, especially during their college years, to try to form and develop their their sense of faith and what they believe and why they believe it. Yeah. Um, so we feel good about it. I'm sure along the way we're going to find out that Baylor has its own problems, but um, but right now... If you're looking for you, that's the thing is, so much of dialogue right now politically or in just all facets is we, we pretend like there's some utopia we can get to where you can't hit perfection. You're just going to eliminate all your enemies and you're just going to have easy pickings or whatever. You can't. Um, you mentioned the lion's den. One other comment, or I'll just go through a couple more. You yeah. see uh, how this um, lines up. You can or you can't. Nate, it's up to you. Throwing your kids into the lion enclosure at the zoo is like Hunting training for your children. Living in Gaza is like survival training for our children's faith. Sending your kids out to the enemy army while your city is besieged can be great soldier training for them. So those concepts imply that parents are doing nothing at home. I know. And I think think in a weird way, they're confessing to their own parenting skills. Oh, yeah. I think Freud would have something to say about that or some other psychologist. Um, because parents feel powerless and they want, sometimes we want to control so much and we want to keep our, we all want to keep our kids safe, but we all know the, the parents that don't let their kids do anything or constantly keeping them clean. Don't let their hands get dirty. Anything like that. Those kids become sicker. Their immune systems are less equipped to handle the stuff that life throws at them. And I think that's a, Way better metaphor than the the bullshit examples of living in Gaza as like survival f- training for our children's faith. The metaphor of like the the people that are lost in space right now at the space station. I think some of them came back. A couple have stayed up there. Do you think they're getting overtime? Yeah, <laughs> that they Dude, better be. Can you uh, imagine that? Twenty four seven, double like time, eight months of overtime. Oh, dude, and not yeah, and you're eating. Your room and board is on NASA's dime. Um, <laughs> but hey, I think the metaphor... Some, I'm saving money, bitch. Some of these parents are like the people in the space station. If they were to just be up there, they're not exposed to resistance in the form of gravity. And if they don't work out, i.e. come into conflicting ideas, they're going to come back down here and they're going to be weaker for it and worse off. So how do you find the sweet spot? Because... There is a version of this which is exposing kids to things that they're not equipped for when they're not equipped to handle them, and it can be damaging. We're not talking about and people on 6th Street in Austin, Texas. <laughs> don't let your kids be exposed there. At any age. Actually, don't let adults be exposed to that. To be honest, there's problems. No. Um, th- uh, so, all right, let's talk about this. You and I have a different philosophy of parenting in what content we'll show our kids. Do we? We do. For sure. Hasn't he, Okay. 
not to throw you under the bus you in this can, no you can do it um my daughter keeps asking to see fight club my kids haven't seen fight club are you sure yeah you, you might want to check on that oh not with me around <laughs> I mean, we have a password protected Netflix, but yeah, we do have a couple movies that's like, oh yeah, we could probably watch this, and then it's like, oh, fast forward, fast forward, fast forward. <laughs> Didn't wait, wait, wait. Conversation afterwards. Have you watched it with them? The movie it? No. <laughs> no, I'm referring to some secret movie. Have you watched it? <laughs> wink, wink. Yeah, uh, I thought you did watch it with your kids. No, I don't want to watch that garbage. I mean, the book is great, but that, that movie scared me as a grown ass man. And you watched that with your kids? I watched it by myself in the dark. <laughs> oh my gosh. Nope. And I cuddled with the dog the whole night. And you're. And then you kicked puddled. her away. Yeah, then I kicked her away. <laughs> Get out of here, dog. Yeah, she saw a squirrel. That movie's terrifying. Uh, no, I, but you're I, right. And the subjective nature of things. I think in general, if if we were to rank ourselves in the in the in the level of adultness of movies we'll just pick this one i think you may you you have tended to show your kids more uh this i don't mean to say it this way but like more adult themed uh content earlier than than Lindsay and i did probably yeah i know this because i would sh- shun you it's come up on the podcast i mean last you for it I'm like how could you last week we talked about the inwards and blazing saddles and that's right i subjected my kids and i i they were not prepared for that and i wasn't actually it was the jerk oh yeah actually i haven't watched blazing saddles with them now that i think about it It was the jerk oh i was conflating my inward movies you got an opportunity it's easy to do (laughs) next week kids (laughs) but in the jerk he he does say it somebody he hears somebody else call somebody else the N-word, and then I, I, I'm messing this up. You don't have up. to justify the jerk. We don't need... That's, no, the point is... The, that, fun, the funny thing is, he's like, you are looking at an N-word, and he says the word, because he's a simple person that was raised by a black family, and that's all he ever knew, and he's white, Steve Martin, people, in case you haven't seen it. Spoiler alert. Movie that's 50 years old or whatever. Yeah. But... But you get to talk about the context. Yeah, that one's relatively harmless. Yeah, I can't. I um, it's failing me. Which ones you've shown your kids? I feel you like you've shown them some scary ones that I was like, dude, I don't even know if I'd watch that movie. Probably. And the weird thing is, I, I feel less pearl clutchy about some of the steamier. If there's like, make out or maybe, more, on on the sexual side of things, like I don't want. I'm not gonna like watch sex scenes with them. We fast forward that. But it has crossed my mind that we're so just in general, I think most of this most of this is true about all of us, even if it's not true about our kids. Yeah. We get more uncomfortable with the sex stuff than we do about people's heads getting blown off. And neither of them are real in movies. It's it's fictional. Like it's they didn't actually have sex. How do you unless, know? Well, unless you're watching other things that are on certain machines, but But there are uh Humans are we're, we're visual processing creatures, and um, depending on who the person is, those things can get stuck in your head, and they can be haunting. I still remember. This is true. I still remember when I was in college watching American History X. You ever watched that movie, Nate? You probably shouldn't. There's there's a scene at the beginning. What where, a great look Nate is giving. I know you. he's like, like he's squinting. He's like like the fuck. Why would I watch that? No. What's the matter with you? Yeah. American History yeah. X. And there's in the beginning, early part of the movie where Edward Norton commits a murder. And um, and the way that he does it, I didn't know it was a thing. And I remember, I remember for two weeks, it was so disturbing. I couldn't get that out of my head. I remember praying. I'm like, God, like, just remove this. Because it's... It's disturbed me so much, and this is me. At God's like, like, I don't even have that power. Sorry. Yeah, he's <laughs> like, what if I could? <laughs> this is like at twenty years old, and so, so, I, I that for me was a lesson of like, as I'm evaluating content for my kids, hey, what is the thing going to be? If I was affected in this way, 
kids got my DNA, they may be affected in that way too. And uh, yeah, especially when it's your, you can, your body adjusts and you can get numb to things a little bit. Yeah. Which may not be good. May not be good. And it's also, it's not wrong necessarily if you're used to a particular thing. Like I know people that are very well adjusted that enjoy horror movies in a way that I don't. Are they, I haven't watched are they well horror adjusted? movies with my kids and uh, they've asked and I haven't done that. I don't like those, man. I was exposed to Pet Cemetery um, when I was a pet cemetery Seven or, or eight, pet cemetery the movie. Speaking of pet cemetery, Ranger, come here. Come over here. Come here. Okay. Come on. Come here. If you up. guys want to see the dog up. survived up. Andy's kicking. I didn't really kick her. Ranger, come here. Psst, psst, up. Come on. Oh, good girl. Oh, what a beautiful dog. Oh, All right. This isn't going to stop. So keep that going and I'll just talk over it. She kissed me, listener. We do it again for the ASMR. Thank you. <laughs> I definitely get oh, through. Oh, that's a good girl. My uh, my parents, aunt and uncle, they all went out for dinner and left me with my older cousins. And I walked in on them watching Pet Cemetery, which is Dude. an old horror movie. And I don't know if it holds up. I haven't gone back. It's I was Stephen trauma- King. It I probably was does. Traumatized by it. Children of the Corn. Any Stephen King's really. I don't. I don't like horror either. It like it it messes with me. However. The book It. I like The Shining. I mean, the book It is amazing. Shining, Shining was the oh, one we watched. That's I the watched one with the you kids. watched. With, yeah. yeah, and that is disturbing, even as a forty-year-old man. So your kids are messed up for life. They're totally prepared for public school now. He watched it with them. They were eight years old, Nate. Oh. They were no, <laughs> you liar. No judgment. <laughs> I was thinking of what I was going to say next. Eight years and I, just, old. I almost didn't hear that. I was going to let that go. Eight. 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 He brought, they had barely gotten out of diapers and he, he pointed their faces at the screen the whole time. Right. They tried to look away. Oh, brutal. Okay. Well, back to um, so, the so public school stuff. I think that there is, there, Ideally, as a parent, right, you try to find a sweet spot. How can I protect some level of in- innocence? Um, naivete is not a terrible thing. There's protect that as long as you can. There's there's not a lot of value in uh, a ten year old who knows the ways of the world, right? Yeah, it's like the metaphor of the garden story, where before they're exposed to the knowledge of good and evil. They had Adam and Eve had paradise. Yeah, actually, that's a good point. Thank you. Not perfection. Billy Bond. <laughs> Billy gets a shout out. Actually, I don't even think it says paradise in the Old Testament. It might get referred to that in Revelation. It's, it's not a direct. Yeah, it's later a, on. Yeah, but it's not. It wasn't created perfect, but they they had everything they needed, and they just. I. You can take it literally if you want, but my more important drive is. You once you know too much, it it's it hamstrings you. You're exposed. You you recognize your own shame because you have knowledge. Oh, I made a mistake. When you're a kid, it watching your kid grow up when they're just young and they're toddlers and everything. Everything is magic. It's perfect because they don't know. It's very good. They don't know all the ins and outs. They don't know when they make a mistake. You help them up when they get a boo boo and all that stuff, or when others do. It's so beautiful. Which is an argument for why you should never join church leadership. That's right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. You get the knowledge of the tree, the fruit of the good and garden and evils. Um, that wasn't a sentence. The good and the garden. The good and the garden and evils. I'm weaving again, guys. Here we go. Um, but that finding that sweet spot of how can I, uh, how can I introduce these things to my kids in a way that they can start to understand them, start to wrestle with them, but in a way that doesn't, screw them up forever right that doesn't damage them that doesn't leave some imprint in them but it, that's hard and it feels like sometimes that's like a moving target yeah you know and, and why there will never stop being uh parenting books is because humanity is so diverse the way people learn like our kids are your two daughters, my two daughters are so different from each other. Yeah. Same parents raising them. Yep. You can recognize things in you, 
things in them that are from you, things that are from your wife, yeah. all that stuff. Um, there's no like cookie cutter. This is the way it is. And so I say this too much, right? I haven't said it yet until now. Your mileage may vary on how you raise your kids. But I do know... Drink, Nate. Very generally... I said the drinking term. Very generally, if you protect your kids and over-shelter them, you make them weaker. And this isn't just about faith and Christianity. This is in all senses. Um, and if you abdicate your responsibility as a parent, you raise sociopaths. Yes. <laughs> and so... Like literally, Ted Kaczynski, the Unabomber, didn't get, he was in a home for a while as a baby where nobody was touched. He didn't have he any didn't physical touched, contact. Right. Yeah. And so th these things matter and it's, it's a balance. But the How alarming thing, and I know this isn't real life, the Twitter thing, but it's so much of like you post a picture of, of fried chicken. I love fried chicken. Oh, you hate steak? Like that's what. I love do you pancakes. know what? Do you know what had to happen to get that chicken? Yeah, I really like this beer. Oh, so you hate scotch and everybody who drinks it? Whatever it is, it's like this weird dichotomy of like we have to. The all the language is disheartening of the godless. The, it's the godless trying to but destroy that's what God. I wonder if like how much technology and algorithms are pointing us towards only holding extreme views and losing the nuance. Like we can see this in the trends of headline skimming. I'm not going to take the time to research, to read through it directly. I will skim headlines Yeah, and, and gravitate towards the things that bolster my inclinations. Yeah. I, I'm, I just, I'm thinking about fear profiteers and that's, most of profier tears. Mo nice. <laughs> um, that's that's a tough one when you're three drinks in. <laughs> but uh, and this this is all directions politically, spiritually. Anybody that has a big, your church grows more if you scare people into following into following God into following you. Your political platform grows more, and this. This applies to people you agree with and disagree with. So if you're on the right and you like a Charlie Kirk or a Candace Owens or whoever, they're not encouraging you with what's about seeing the best in life. They're scaring you because that's what brings in the numbers. And they don't even have to do it consciously. It's a subconscious drive that forces us in, into playing to the algorithm. Um, and so I think we need to... We haven't done that for the most part. I mean, we've talked about stories yeah. that, that are, have been uh, kind of juicy, but none of us, none of this, of this is directionally towards scaring people into watching this podcast. But there, maybe there's a another facet. So maybe we should. <laughs> well, I, I don't know if it's a if it's completely about fear, but there is some. I, I think that there's a common. Uh, position which is feeling justification in in defending a belief system, position, culture, way of life, and so it is. Um, my job is is defender of this thing, and if and if I don't stand up for this, it may not be fear, but uh, maybe that maybe the core maybe the core emotion is people fear. Are, still, people are searching for purpose. Maybe the main thing is finding a purpose, and fear is probably the best motivator. Yeah, but th the point that I was trying to make is like there's fear. Hey, they're doing all these terrible things and and there can be a version of that which is how how terrible is that? The other thing is I I need to preserve the good thing. So I I I'm I'm acting as a wall to preserve the good thing. Maybe it's a maybe as I say it out loud it's only a slight variation of fear. That's uh, okay. And maybe it's justified. I don't know. There's a good At times the fear the fear response is how humans have survived so at its core it's a good thing but like you said the social media the way things are yeah designed to tap into that it's on overdrive and it's it's like porn is the the unhealthy way of expressing and finding sexuality in a 
I was going to say acceptance, whatever it is. Like uh, that's about control, mostly. It can be, but but uh, it's it's like ramped. It's dialed up to eleven. It's the fast food of sexuality. Sure, and it's not healthy. Um, fear does a similar thing. Um, it it causes us to segment, and we have to have the ins versus the outs, and we miss. They're, the way these people are talking about public school, I promise you, in every public school, no matter how bad, a lot of those people believe in God in some way, and they would all, most of them would ha- would want what's best for their kids. It doesn't mean it always plays out that way. There are, some, I'm not denying that there's agendas in public schools or in some of the curriculum but this is all a part of being an adult in the world is you prepare your kid to come across different ideas, but the average teacher is not trying to poison your kid against God. They're just trying to get by. And they, they're, they're, it's like, I'm just trying to feed my family and all that stuff. And we all want, at the end of the day, we all want what's best. Most people, most people want what's best for humanity in general and especially for their family and community. I think that's true. Most but the problem is is that there not everyone agrees on what on how to get there. What is best. Right. So their version of their best may be someone else's worst. This is true, which is where communication comes in. And I think you hit the nail on the head when you some of these comments kind of betray the fact that you you guys don't ever talk to your kids. You just try to shelter them from all the bad. Yeah. But, but if you have a dialogue with your kid, and like we said before, it's different for every kid as they age, but whatever the situation, as your kid gets older, you have to make decisions to allow your kid to experience discomfort because they need to grow. Because if they just, yeah. if they just stay in your nest, they'll never learn how to fly. Producer Nate, um, how old does your daughter Maggie need to be before you and your wife sh- let her watch the movie Shining? <laughs> the Shining. Have you seen The Shining? Actually, that's probably the best place to start. Have you and oh, yeah. and your wife allowed e- each other to see the movie Sh- The Shining? We've seen it. Yeah. Classic. It's a masterpiece. Yeah. Can't not see it. I actually got it. a stuffed animal about the gentleman from the, the gentleman with the axe embedded in his chest. I got a stuffed, uh, not an animal, it's a... It's a stuffed human. Oh, he was an animal, all right. <laughs> that poor guy, man. Uh, that's a that there's that that scene, and there's the one scene with the old lady upstairs. It's weird. Yeah, in the bathroom. It, it, yeah, in the bathroom. That the is zombie. It looks like his wife. She turns around. She's like a uh, not his wife, <laughs> and she's naked and um. And then she changes, and yes, I fast forwarded that part. I'm pretty sure, but it origi- probably eight years old. It was originally it originally came <laughs> nice. out as he's a way, uh, yeah. he's way ahead of me. Nice, nice eight callback. years old, solid. Um, it originally came out as a made for TV movie, and even the made for TV movie was terrifying, like mm. terrifying. It's funny. It's it's not funny. The wrong adjective. It's just ominous. It it gets classified as horror, but it's not the same as it's not a slasher. It's like a thriller. It just builds and I've never, builds. I've never read a builds. scary book like that. It's like a thousand pages long. It was a page turner. I need to read that book. It's I haven't so read good. That book. It's so good. And I don't like these things. I I like genuinely do not like horror things. That was really good, but I wouldn't let my kids watch it because I'm a good dad. Um, <laughs> but finding, uh, in, so. <sighs> When you were talking earlier, Zach, one thing came to mind. Fear is rooted in control. And I think a lot of it stems from the idea that you If we have... outsource our parenting because it's easier or we believe Sorry, the lie that alert. we're not qualified experts. Holy crap. I don't know how buttons work. Zach has just learned about the internet yesterday. The point that I was trying to make was um, uh, the idea that we have more control than we actually do. This was evidenced when our youngest daughter was three years old. She, in the middle of the night, she rolled out of bed, her bottom bunk bed onto carpet, like we have here in the studio. Same carpet. This is not thin. YouTube.com slash bros babbles beer. And she broke her collarbone. Whoa. You should give her more protein. Fail as a parent. 
Yeah. Hollow bones. She have like bird bone disorder. Calcium, not protein. She oh, whatever. Needs calcium. Both. Maybe your kids need calcium. Too. Yes, just been Andy. Protein only. <laughs> They're all they're only muscle. They're all jacked. <laughs> um, she broke her collarbone, and Lindsay to this day will say she's like that was the moment she was where she was like okay, I I don't have control over over my kids. I I cannot what actually what even can I protect them from? In this the most safe of scenarios, you are at home. You just rolled out of bed and you broke your collarbone. And and while ultimately it was it was like a relatively safe in outcome, um, that coming to that realization that like we just we don't get to control this uh, world, so our job is to help your kids through it and and help pace them through these things, and ideally expose them to the levels of stuff that they are you deem they're able to handle. Yeah. So maybe your kids were able to handle this stuff earlier. Than our kids were, um, or maybe they're not, and you've created sociopaths. That's potentially, you know, that's that remains to be seen. And give them know, time. We're going to do this podcast for the next twenty years, and we'll provide consistent updates on this progress. But knowing your kids, they are not sociopaths. But they're delightful human beings. They are. Thank you. Talk to your kids. Communicate with your kids. Dialogue. Not just tell them. Don't 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 do yeah. do do. Get to know how they feel about something. Here. I just imagine the bird. <laughs> don't, don't, don't. Don't, do, 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 do. do, do. Don't, don't, do, do. I mean, based on some of these responses, that's basically what might be going on in the house. Yeah, don't, so, don't, don't. That's idiocracy. Do. Do. Uh, do, do. <laughs> Electrolytes. It has what plants crave. <laughs> Oh right. my gosh. Okay, you want to pull up something? One more clip and then let's do some feedback and All get right. out of here. I like it. Uh this is a button. This is from uh back in August. The the nice atheist the kind atheist Hement Meta. I think he's like the nice atheist. I'm I'm sorry. I I don't I like his stuff. Uh, I like listening to him. He's a thoughtful guy. Too many caveats. Play this clip. You're right. This is uh Nope. Is he fear profiting? If we outsource Kirk our Cameron. parenting because it's easier or we believe the lie that we're not qualified experts to educate our kids, so we have to we have to subcontract our parenting and discipleship out to the government, we're going to have little kids that come back as little Marxists, little statists, little atheists, drag queens, strippers, drug dealers, and <laughs> you name it. Pull your kids out of the schools that are teaching our kids bad things and put them into places that teach them good things. Okay. I both agree and don't agree. I know. I had the same <laughs> thoughts. It's like, yes, if some of that stuff was true... I, and it I, might be. I wouldn't want my kids to become those things. No. No. Um, but it's the, it's the... So stop teaching them. We're, <laughs> we're making... The more we consume just that type of stuff, it's there's no room for... Where's the gray? Okay, wh- I can I can create a good scenario with what Kirk Cameron was saying. I could steel man that and say, I see what he's trying to do, and I can find the things I like about that, and I can learn from it and grow from it. And also, I can point out that he's doing all he's doing is in versus out. You go to this school, this is what you're going to get from your kids, and that's right. just not true. And we're all living examples of that. Literally. I don't know if that helps your point. <laughs> I think it does. For comedic no, purposes, I know. you're right. I know, but I know, I know. I believe in us. Yes. I. Um, you're supposed to laugh at my joke and realize that it's a joke. Nate, you're not laughing at my joke. Laugh out loud, Nate. You're fired. <laughs> Add more. <laughs> okay, that's better. Better, we'll but you're still it. fired. And so... Um, you almost made it, Nate. And you still got fired. You thought you weren't going to get fired. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Oh, that's you a, know what? You, you got some feedbacks? I think uh, comments. You're gonna do. You, oh, I'm gonna what? You're gonna look up our feedbacks. I'm gonna look it up. Yeah, because oh, you're better at doing that. Okay. Um. Uh, oh gosh. But uh, um, I recognize that there's a lot of way we didn't cover all the bases. We're failing purity tests every direction, depending on how you feel about politics, um, religion, faith, how to raise your kids. So I will just say. Bros, Bibles, Beer, and all the socials. 
uh, youtube.com bros bibles beer do me do us a favor and let us know where you're at with the parenting um with the politics whatever it is uh because i know i know there's a multitude of beliefs and one of the reasons we want to do this podcast and we we can't cover all the bases but this is not an echo chamber and we no. don't want to become one um and so share where you're at Sh- share some of your chamber with us we would love that <laughs> So I'm going to share a little something slightly disappointed. Our comments, the comment well was dry for the last three um, videos posted. Oh, okay. So I, had, I I found one though. Did you look at shorts? There's some a couple on the shorts. But, on the shorts? I didn't but go look. ahead if you found one. Go uh, for it. Um, I found one and then I'll bounce to the shorts real quick. I'll make this fast. Uh, this is from the one, the only, Dave Millsap. And uh, this is from episode... Probably 245. 245. Good church news. Letting your kids grow... Oh, letting your kids go. And the Shroud of Turin. Um, first off, two comments from Dave. Number one, Tyson sounds hot. Producer Tyson. Sorry, man. You got competition. Tyson brought his A game. Maybe rookie of the year pro- prospects. But you're an old veteran now. So watch out for them youngsters. All right. Dave wanted to clarify, though, his previous comments about our um, earlier guest, Paul Gibbs. Paul Gibbs. Yes. Dave Millsap, not Paul Millsap. (laughs) (laughs) Former small power forward for the Utah Jazz. And I think Uh, a country singer as well. uh, A different Paul Millsap. Ronnie Millsap. Ah, dang it. I did it again. (laughs) Yes. Invite me to all your music trivia. Okay, to be clear, I don't think Paul, the guest, was taking advantage of anyone by selling books. As a callback, Paul Millsap sounded like he was giving Dave our- Dave Millsap. Doggone it, Dave Millsap <laughs> sounded like he was giving our guest, Paul Gibbs, crap for- That's why I got messed for up. For selling books. Yeah, for selling books. Paul Gibbs was throwing me off. Uh, I was pointing out that if the purpose of the books were to help lead more people to God, does he offer free downloads? I then use the example of Paul writing and sending letters to the churches far and wide for what I assume are the same purposes your guest writes. Um, I still don't agree with that. Like that doesn't help the situation. So any Christian author should not profit from any books that they ever write because their goal is to lead more people to God. Shouldn't do that. What if the money that you're making allows you to write more books? Because if you weren't writing if you weren't writing those books and making money from them, you would have to do something else and then you wouldn't be able to write more books. Yeah. Right? Okay. And what if a mega a mega church pastor can't like sit with regular people on a on a plane? They need to make enough money to be on a private plane so they can't be distracted from focusing on God. <laughs> it and, goes without saying. Yeah, obviously. Commercializing Christianity just like selling tickets for a weekend getaway to help you refocus on your spiritual relationship with God. Just seems so incongruent with how the New Testament worked. Um, I mean, definitely, we're in a totally different world than the way the economy worked back then. Yeah. And it's not. I don't look at it as we're wrong. That was right. But how much was a denarii? This isn't right Dave by Millsap? definition. Um. Uh, by the way, inflation. What do you think thirty pieces of silver is by now? Uh. <laughs> When oh uh, Judas betrayed Jesus, uh, inflation-wise, like what's what are we talking about now? What would it take for me to betray Jesus? Silver is held up. I mean, for somebody. Also, nine days to clear up a skin condition. Not exactly the way miraculous healing manifested in the Bible. Immediately was what made them miraculous. Uh, uh, I don't know if that's true. Maybe. Maybe it is. Maybe. It. it I. Um. I don't think it disqualifies it. Um. Food for thought. Yeah. Thanks, David. Uh, let me see if I can find a couple others really quickly. Uh, oh, gosh. Nope. Not that one. Nope. Not that one. Good pod. Sorry. That's all right. I'm going for them, but they're, oh, you we're don't not know getting... how to use iPads now. I got it. Stop. Pause. There we go. <laughs> That's Dave Melsap again. Such a good pod. Uh, this is from one of our shorts. I'm talking about something. Is it safe to say when you are seeking God's goodness 
Oh, sorry. Is it safe to say when you are seeking where God's goodness is in the middle of twisted life, you're excluding God from causing any of the twisted? Oh, good I like question. This one. I'll talk and about this. This is going to start another hour of podcasting. Let's we'll put a we'll put a cap on. It. Let's time box this one. Two minutes. Sure. Okay. And go. go. Um. Yes, I'm excluding God from causing any of the twisted. One hundred. Is that a change for you? Um, n- was there ever a point where you thought like, Hey, God's got a plan. He's either allowing this or maybe not causing it, but allowing it. That's to, different to, though. To make That's different. Work. That's not what he's saying. He says he's causing the twisted. There's no point in my life. But if where- he could stop it and he doesn't, and he just allows it to happen, That's what's the different. difference? That is different. You didn't create it. You the allow fruit it. is the same. Uh, I watched a murder happen across the street is not the same as I caused the murder. It's not okay. I'm not suggesting it's okay. But if you could stop the murder and you decide to not, you still didn't. You still didn't do the murder, right? Yeah, but it's not the same as the parents. I'm. I'm not saying it's okay. It's not the same. It's why this conversation good, is so juicy. Good Samaritan law. Um. Uh, I don't think God caused the Holocaust. I, there's an argument because there aren't Jews. There's a. <laughs> I like to think of somebody that didn't catch the oh earlier part. Oh my gosh! Part. They didn't catch the earlier part. Oh and that's the gosh. one time they heard me say that. Nate, you didn't laugh. You're fired. We're gonna edit that out. You have to laugh. Nate's on trying my... to protect this job. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's by protecting it. You're losing it. You need to lose yourself to gain yourself. And guess what? God didn't cause any of that. He just watched it happen. Uh... <laughs> I'm sorry. What were you saying, wow. Andy? I'm sorry. Mostly that. <laughs> That's effectively what I am saying. Uh, no, he di- he didn't cause those things. There is there is a belief, a theology that says God is is in control. Therefore, he is actively doing these things. So when you see these evil acts in the world, it's actually God causing that because it creates a contrast with His goodness, which I believe. And uh, ultimately I, will be for his glory. I think is super shitty theology and is not biblical at all. We just failed all of the Calvinist uh, purity, theological purity tests. But yeah, but ultimately they would say it's for his glory. And ultimately it's that's what it's about, um, which is of little comfort to somebody when... Well, it's, it's worse. You're recovering from sexual abuse or whatever. It's worse. Uh, Don't worry, God's going to get the glory. <laughs> He did that to you for himself. Well, they would massage it differently than that, but yes. That that it's hard for me to not see that's around what the, that. That's what the that's what the theology boils down to is God God in uh actively participated in evil in the world to create a contrast to show you his goodness in the world. There's there's nothing in the Bible that suggests that that, that is congruent with God's character. Um, I would disagree with that. Other than I don't disagree. Other than all the passages that seem to say that God ordains certain things, um, but I don't evil I, things though. Yeah, I mean, he straight up it pretty much says he hardened Pharaoh's heart. Is that evil? To well, Pharaoh did was trying to do evil things. Um, I don't subscribe to this. I don't hold an inerrancy position on the Bible, which gives me sort of an uh, get out of jail free card with some of these conversations I recognize. But um, can I just say, I'm not answering yours, but I'm reminded of our friend Billy, which you mentioned before. He recently texted us about, he was thinking about the Garden of Eden and how sin started. Did did God allow that? Or like, did sin not exist? I don't remember his exact question, but... Started with, do you think... The Garden of Eden was, was perfect. perfect. Yeah, and th- let me just say that that those that line of questioning is sort of along the lines of things that got me to go down rabbit trails of like, well, if that's true, what does that say about this, and what does that say about this, and it can lead to this chain reaction of of question and answer, which you should go down if you're having those questions. Just find people you can trust that yeah. that you can bounce those questions off of. That might have thoughtful responses, and maybe, and with me, I had somebody in my life that was helpful. Yeah, but 
You don't want to pool your ignorance. With yes. Others, right? Yes, and it's the type of questions that the old answers from. I'm I'm guessing from Billy, but I'll, for my purposes, the old answers that I had from people that believed, like, well, the just read the Bible says it there. It just wasn't there. Satis- it is. It wasn't satisfying. It became less and less satisfying. Um, but you can thoughtfully deconstruct and know that it's okay. For me, I didn't think it was okay, and it was like, oh my gosh, this feels really scary. What is happening to me right now? I think, you know, then then that's where people spin off and potentially just. Become the fundamentalist atheist as sure. opposed to the fundamentalist Christian that I used to be. By the way, just to clarify, are you were you proposing that um, evil is a part of God's character? No, and so that's that's a great question, Andy, to help clarify. I just, I just want to make sure because that stuck out. I'm glad you said we that. didn't catch on that. But because I do the weave, I was coming back around to that. But I appreciate you helping me there's, do that quicker. There's three of us here. We could do the three man oh, weave. Man, that would be the the hairiest, weirdest weave ever. Yeah, it would be. Yeah. Actually, I'm not that hairy. Anyway. Thanks to manscaped.com slash bros. <laughs> if you use the code word <laughs> No. It doesn't exist. Yeah. Well, if you use the code word bros and you get ten percent off, can you let, let us, us know. let us know? <laughs> we want to use that. Yeah. Uh God and evil. Um I'm not sure exactly where I land on this, but I am currently directionally sympathetic to process theology. The world is constantly in process, and the idea of that God is actual agape love, and love can't control. If you've loved something great, when you love your wife well- That's or, good, but that's orthogonal to the question of whether or not evil exists as part of God's character. No, it does. I mean, e- evil exists, but- I suppose in some weird way, if if you just follow back, if there is a God that cares about us personally that created the world, somehow evil got into it. So maybe God has less control or maybe evil is a part of his purposes. Right now, I choose to believe that evil is not a part of God's purposes. Yeah. Um, but I'm open to all these conversations along the way that to, to wrestle with these things. And that's where I land too, is that evil exists in the world um and and so does god and god god might god's motivations if, are not if god is good and agape love logically the possibility exists that god has a little less control over the day-to-day um tinkerings that then we would be comfortable which can be scary and also comforting depending on your perspective yeah intentionally does not have but also some would say intentionally or not does not have. But we said we would time box this. Yes, and we, and we won't we go into it. Yeah. Dave Millsap, thank you yeah. for your uh, thoughtful comments. We always appreciate you. And uh, other people, follow Dave's example. Thoughtful comments. Cam, not a bot, LOL. Where are you at, bro? Uh, we've been looking for the you. balls in your court. And um, Okay, if you have enjoyed what you've seen or listened to. Or if you haven't. If you haven't, even if you hadn't. Feed the algorithm. Send some hate comments That's our right. way. Thank you. And then it will make sure that we show up in other people's feeds. Um, like and subscribe. It genuinely does help the channel grow. It helps us as uh, podcasters be able to fuel the fire, put a little wind in our sails, and uh, get this out to more and more folks. And uh, if Andy has wind in his sails, he's less likely to kick his dog. Uh, there's less dog kicking. So if you want my dog to be kicked, don't like, subscribe, and share this with at least one other person. Uh, Nate, you're fired. You can hit me with my camera if you have a chance. Thanks. And also, Jews exist. I happen to try to follow one particular Jew um, and in his modeled example. So I just want to put that on the record. Uh, Juice world. It was a, ju- it was a joke. <laughs> it was a j- joke. Anyway, uh, like, subscribe. Please share the podcast with at least one other person that you think might be interested in uh, hearing these kinds of conversations because, like I said, it does help us be able to grow. If you want to follow us on all the socials at Bros Bibles Beer, you can send us an email, brosbiblesbeer at gmail.com, and you can send us a voicemail, which we should probably check. We haven't checked in a couple. Speakpipe.com, speakpipe.com slash bros. Yep, speak speakpipe.com slash bros and in the comments let us know if you'd be interested in some bros merch because 
You see this little lovely number right here? You may have been noticing this. Uh, these were made as some prototypes. Can we go to camera me real quick here, Nate? Thanks. We made some of these as some prototypes. It's fun, but guess what? We could make more. And if you uh, want to be part of the Bros, Bibles, and Beer Nation, let us know. And then if we get enough people commenting, we'll create some merch. Anyway. Let's get out of here. For Zach, for Producer Nate, I am Andy. Bye, Jeff. Hi, Jeff. Bye, Jeff. Grace. Peace. Cheers. Cheers. I should be drinking water.